maybe you can give me a little nutshell resume on some of the watches in your collection, especially the Amiga sure. ones, and uh, your feelings towards Amiga in general. Yeah, absolutely. And by the way, I think Jonathan did a, a great job. Um, he supported the Rolex brand. I love Rolex. I have a lot of heart for it. Um, I, I have one that I, I love that has now been uh, stolen. Nah, that's too harsh of a word. Adopted by Danielle. So I remember it well. But um, I think Omega tends to get a bad rap because, accurately said, they did pay to be a part of the Bond films. Um, 1995, you know, GoldenEye saw the Quartz version, obviously, of an Omega watch. And that was not by accident. It's not because it was chosen in, in a random way. They paid money and they continue to pay money to be in these films. So everybody automatically thinks well, you know, Rolex is, is authentically Bond. Omega is a paid-for Bond moment. Um, what people tend to forget is that Omega has an amazing core culture and military background. Uh, if you know anything about the brand, they started in 1848. So they're not the newcomers in town. Uh, in fact, in many cases, they predate Rolex, which a lot of people do not realize. Um, I think Omega has... When people think of Omega outside of James Bond, they think of the Speedmaster, which is the moon watch, the moon landing watch. And that's truly what made them famous. But the the Seamaster, I think, is more prestigious. And by the way, just just to kind of uh, I have props. I have props. <laughs> so here here is a Seamaster. Now, it's not a new one. This is the Tomorrow Never Dies Seamaster that I own. Love it. Bought this a very emotional purchase. This was your first around, one, whatever. right? Your first Amiga. This is my first Omega, and 100% it's because James Bond Brosnan was wearing it. No other reason. I didn't know the brand at all. But the Seamaster was a big watch that, obviously, the producers and the costume designer and Omega wanted to highlight. But British military started using Omega around 1917. And everybody aligns Omega with British military even that far back. But people don't realize that the U.S. Army— actually used Omega watches in 1918. Right. So we followed the, the, the British soldiers, if you will. Um, but Omega, and again, this, this blows people away, and, and maybe you'll even get some arguments on this thread, but Omega was the first ones to really come out with that depth of the ocean marine watch in 1932. And one of the things they did was they, uh, they came up with the O-ring gasket, which is this wonderful, uh, it, it's what makes something waterproof. And Omega took inspiration, let's say, from submarines. They studied submarines and they said, I wonder, I wonder what keeps them from drowning, you know, from what they're <laughs> getting. And they're like, oh, check it out. It's all this like rubber O-ring stuff. And they applied it to their watches. So they created a watch that had a 60 meter depth, which isn't that much today. But in 1957, the dive watch was born, the, the Seamaster. Um, as a matter of fact, um, the Seamaster 300, Here's another prop. This may look familiar from Spectre. Here's the one, the Tempest Fujit watch. Mm -hmm. This was an homage. The face of it is very similar to the one that you would have seen in 1957, the Seamaster 300. So they, they, they cobbled all this together. British Ministry of Defense used Omega, Jacques Cousteau. Um, and then obviously they changed things over in 2005, 2006 with the Planet Ocean, Planet Ocean which there, you see yeah. Daniel Craig wearing. Beautiful. So I think that a lot of people forget that Omega's got this really rich horror culture watch history that people kind of just slough off because it's paid promotion. Right, that's amazing. And I, I just love, you've got the Quantum of Solace one, I believe as well, haven't you? In your somewhere collection. in the somewhere, collection, somewhere yes. In the depths. And, and, and skipping through a couple of your videos earlier on before I jumped on the call, the Spectre one that you showed there, you said that's uh, one that's very fond for you and a very, it gets a lot of use. This is the one that you can pair with a tuxedo. Oh, that's fantastic. And, and also pitches as well when you're at work. Do you, yeah. so do you have like some watches that are indexed for certain occasions and you think, oh, I'm definitely going to be wearing this one tonight because I'm doing this? Yes. So, I mean, you hit it on the nail. I think this is one that you can do a little bit more dressed up. You've got the NATO strap, so that kind of gives it a little bit more lightness to it and whimsy, as opposed to something very hub heavy rubber. I mean, this is indicative of Daniel Craig, so I would wear this with a polo, T-shirt. I wouldn't 
wear this with a tuxedo. Right. I might wear it with the metal band, yeah. but I'd wear this with a tuxedo, or I might even wear this with a tuxedo because it's got the metal band. But this, I mean, look at the size of this. Uh, yeah. It's huge. So to wear this with a tuxedo might be a little bit overwhelming. Thank you.